Um, good afternoon. My name is Nina Teller. I'm the exec director of Hurry's Wilder's Dreams, an abolitionist black organization here in Washington, D.C. that's um, actually here to support and protect all black lives that's involved with state-sanctioned violence and the different isms that affect black people. Unfortunately, we are gathered here once again in the name of police brutality. And time and time again, we gotta keep showing up for the same thing. And it comes to time that we say enough is enough. Enough is enough. And in the name of, I shouldn't have to get another call from a family asking for support and to get justice for another family here in DC. And with that being said, we know that what happened to Justin Robinson on that night, that morning, that in, the, in that early morning hours, was undeser un undeservable, unjust, senseless, and we need the city, the city, to hold all, all parties, all parties involved accountable. If we continue the cycle of keeping allowing killer cops to stay on our streets, when would it ever stop? Let me say it again. If we continue the cycle of allowing killer cops to stay on our streets, when would it ever stop? So I'm gonna move to the side and bring up Brandon Burrell, one of the first attorneys that came to the aid of this family to seek justice for the, uh, for the Robinson family. And then you all will hear from the other attorneys and the Robinson family. Thank you. Thank you, Nene Taylor with Harriet's Wildest Dreams. You know, Har Harriet's Wildest Dreams has been there um, in the community fighting for people for a long time now. I've worked with them before on different cases. Um, and I'm glad for them to be out here fighting again for for uh, someone that tragically lost their life at the hands of the Metropolitan Police Department. Justin Robinson was murdered on September 1st by MPD. Um, it was a senseless death. The MPD model of de-escalation, it, it emphasizes not only de-escalation, reasonableness, and proportionality. And nothing that happened to Mr. Robinson was reasonable the officers never attempted to de-escalate the, the situation, and it was not proportional. It is not consistent with MPD policy or any reasonable use of force policy to stick a firearm next to a subject that they're interacting with, right next to his face, startling him. They knew that he was unconscious at the time. They put the gun into his face. He wakes up and tries to reasonably move the firearm away from his face. They put 10 bullets into Mr. Robinson. That is not proportional. That is not reasonable. I am happy to be working with District Legal Group on this case, an excellent firm of attorneys, because we want to make sure that the family of Justin Robinson gets the justice here that they deserve and that Mr. Robinson deserves. So I'm going to let um, Mr. Clark from District District Legal Group come up and address you. Thank you, Brandon, and thank you all for being here today. When I get these calls, it's never easy. And every case is different because every life is different. Rolling down the windows in Southeast DC at nighttime should not be a death sentence. When I saw this video, I played it forwards and backwards, backwards and forwards. And one of the things that stuck out to me was as Justin was rolling down the windows, his window, that police officer stuck a gun inches from his face. And I couldn't believe it, and I couldn't believe it and because at the time, Justin was wearing a Cure the Streets jacket. 
This is one of their own. This is somebody that is trying to stop the violence. Justice for Justin. 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 Is sticking a gun inside of a vehicle protocol, MPD. Now we are calling for the Department of Justice to open a civil rights investigation into the officer, and we're not stopping there. We're also calling for the Department of Justice to open an investigation into the entire Metropolitan Police Department. Because this has to stop. There is no way that this is protocol, and if it is, it's a problem. And we will not rest until our demands are met. We will not rest until our demands are met. We will not rest until our demands are met. Thank you. Good afternoon. So one of the most disturbing, one of the most disturbing facts in this case is that Justin was a victim on September the 1st, of everything he stands to prevent for his community, for his neighborhood, and for the District of Columbia. The Office of Attorney General, which is one of the highest, most prominent law enforcement agencies in the district, they saw its worth. They saw its value. They saw that he was a pillar and a story, a true story and inspiration for rehabilitation and reform. However, the police officers that night did not. Cure the Streets. Justin worked for Cure the Streets as a violent interrupter, uh, a violence interrupter. And part of those duties include they employ local credible individuals with deep ties to the community to work on gun reduction crimes. Justin de-escalated conflicts in an attempt to resolve them through mediation and avert potentially fatal shootings. Mediation, something the police officers could have learned more about that day, right? Or should have tried that day. Because I guarantee you one thing, and we are not going to sit here and play this game like they would not have. If this was a young man with blonde hair and a much lighter skin cue in a McDonald's drive through in Georgetown with a Georgetown hoodie on and a Prius and Virginia license plates, they would have mediated. They would have mediated. We may, they may have been still sitting there right now mediating because they would have not, they would have not executed him the same way they executed Justin. So what we know is, so I'm trying not to get emotional, this is about my fifth case of this sort in the district with their police officers. So what we know is that though the badge numbers may not be the same, sometimes the uniforms may not be the same depending on the municipality or the jurisdiction. However, the outcomes remain the same. The tactics remain the same. The racially motivated unjust killings of our young black man and being treated differently than people who don't look like us in different areas remain the same. And our lives remain at risk. Justice for Justin. At this time, I'm going to call up Justin's sister, Teresa. Hi, everyone. I'm Trelisha. I'm Justin's sister. Um, many of you may have seen me by now, but um, I'll just tell a quick story so that you guys can have a memory of him. Um, I used to take them to school when they were younger, Justin and Joseph. And one time I, um, I used to take them to school and pick them up. And one time I was late picking him up and 
they rode the train by themselves. And when he rode, when they rode the train, um, they missed their stop because they fell asleep. And we were looking for them. They came. They finally came back to the stop. And I remember them saying um, they were in Paris, um, but they were actually at a train station in Virginia. We all laughed um, about them stating that they were in Paris. And Justin, um, he started to cry, and he said, "We were in Paris." And I give you guys that to say that Justin always had an outlook on life that he wanted more, um, and he was very passionate. And so now as I stand here and I talk about Justin, and I have to do this press conference for him and speak for my family and speak for his twin, his twin brother, um, Unfortunately, Justin will never go to Paris. He, he never made it to Paris. That's something that he will never do and that he never got the opportunity to do. So when Justin's life was taken away, so many opportunities were taken away. Um, so many hearts are broken. Um, our stomachs are turning. I have to console his twin brother um, and the call that his twin brother made to me is stuck in my head. Um, of him saying they killed Justin. So when you think about Justin, think about how optimistic he was and how thoughtful he was and how he never got to go to Paris. So justice for Justin. Justice, justice for, for Justin. This is Miss Robinson, Justin's mother. Justin Robinson, he was my baby. He was the youngest of my kids. He had the most beautiful smile. He would light up a room. If you were having a bad day, he would come in and make you feel better. He would give you hugs. He would give you kisses. That's how people determine him for his twin. <laughs> they would say that whenever he hugged, he gave you kisses on the forehead or he gave you a kiss on the cheek. That's how a lot of people um, could tell the difference in them. Um, this is hard for us trying to be strong for his twin brother and his siblings. Um, but he was a beacon of light. And he will truly be missed. He loved the kids. He absolutely loved the kids. He loved helping people. He got that honestly from his mom. <laughs> I would let all their friends in my house, the whole neighborhood can come to my house and hang out. Their moms could uh, always call my house and find their children because they knew their kids were safe. There were children who weren't allowed to spend the night over other people's homes, but they were always allowed into my home. They knew that my house was a safe haven. And um, Justin just wanted to recreate that, a safe haven for people for children and um, we're going to miss him we're going to miss him say his name Justin, Justin Robinson. Robinson justice for Justin justice, justice for, for Justin. Justin no Justin no peace no, no Justin, Justin no, no peace. peace thank you and that concludes the family members um, that will be speaking today so we will open up the panel for questions the floor for questions. Yes. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Can you just speak a little bit louder? I'm sorry. Absolutely, absolutely. Yes, we want accountability for everyone involved. Yes.
We're looking for a thorough investigation. We're looking for a grand jury to convene. The people should be the ones to decide whether or not this officer is charged, not someone sitting behind a desk in an office. And we're asking for this office to conduct a thorough investigation, not only into this officer, but also these officers, but also into MPD as a whole for their police tactics. So this has been Justin's dream to be involved in nonprofit and to help the community since he's been small. Um, they've had mentors, they've had different things since they were about three years old. Um, people have taken to them since they were little because not many people have um, seen identical twins. So this has been something that's been in him since he's been a little kid, since he's been about three years old. You can just keep your voice up because for some reason we all we hear is behind you. Sorry. Uh, in regards to the uh, reaction to the video that was released by MPD, we understand the family has first pulled up the video to go out to go out and do it publicly. But number one, it did uh, create a very strong uh, community reaction. Protests took place last week. You know, some, some folks were arrested. Uh, in those protests, you know, that the community reaction that we saw from the release of the video did that play a role in your decision to? So we always knew that we were going to make the video public, but we wanted to see the video first and make sure that they would release the entire video because we were told that the video video would be redacted. And so um, we wanted the video, the entire video to be shown. And so once we reviewed the video, then we decided to say, hey, go ahead and release the video so that the public may see the entire video. So basically, I've seen these videos time and time again sitting with the families, and I watch the video, and I know how the city does these videos because I've watched them time and time again for Jeffrey Price, Delino Martin, give me more, like so many, Lazarus Wilson. So when I saw that video, I, and they told that they told us they was gonna read. We do a reenactment of the video. I knew that they would put the video that could actually make the, the police officer look look more like he's innocent for putting 10 bullets in Justin. And with that being said, we saw 19 minutes and 18 minutes videos. I knew they was not going to like really show that the whole 18, 19 minutes video. Even with the video y'all saw, that's not the video we saw. They gave y'all like the end of, we saw a beginning when for like, the lady, thir lady in the restaurant said he's been here for 30 minutes and they just like plotting. You all didn't get to see all that. And I knew they would not show that. And so we knew that we were doing a visual. And I, I said, let's tell your story because what we got to do, we got to make the narrative. Because if we don't make the narrative, they're going to tell their narrative. And unfortunately, the media is going to go with law enforcement um, narrative. So that was the reason. It was not not once were we not going to release the video, but it's best y'all chase the truth and not what they was was going to show you all. All right. Yeah, you know, I've been up here way too many times just in the past two years with very similar circumstances, whether it be someone in a vehicle, whether it be police showing up on scene. And one of the things that I see consistently is the disregard for human life because someone is either in a certain neighborhood, it's a certain time of night, and that's the pattern and practice that we're seeing in Southeast DC specifically. And 
something needs to change. Because we don't see this happening in Northwest. We don't see it happening in Northeast. It's only in Southeast where most of the population is black. We're, we are hopeful that DOJ is going to see this, and, and thank you guys for coming out here and covering this important story. And once they come and they, they see the video, if they haven't already, that it would be very clear to them that an investigation needs to happen. We've filed so much, so many, so much paperwork with that office over the past couple of years that they've got to say, you know, this, this is clearly a pattern, right? When things are happening, and so similarly, right, things are happening. It's not just a, oh, this is a once-off, this is, a, this is a, a blip. This is something that is consistently happening in Southeast DC. So um, I'm happy that y'all are covering this story. I'm happy that my colleagues are able to give me the strength. I'm happy that Harry's Wildest Dreams is able to give the entire community the strength to continue to, to fight this. So, so right now, as a, as a as a as a respected organizer here in D.C., it's my duty to keep people safe. And right now, what I don't want to do is get my community members out of cages when I'm trying to fight for justice. Because let's be very clear: if one of my community members would have emptied ten bullets into a person in one of my community members' back in front, they'd be in a cage. I'm an abolitionist organization, but the family want these cops prosecuted to the fullest full extent. And if this was a community member that put 10 bullets in another community member, they would be in the cage. They would be guilty until proven innocent. So it's past time for them to stop giving policemen vacation time, just like they're doing right now with Turn Sutton. Sitting at home on tax dollars, Wait when he's fired now, but you get to sit at home and appeal. My community member can't do that. Enough is enough. And until they hold him accountable, we're going to continue having killer cops. Just last night, two more community members in New York City was killed. These killer cops have to be stopped. This immunity has to stop, and it needs to start today. And I do want to make sure I make a note of as well that we are not forgetting the type of work that Justin Robinson did. So I think what the community is, it came to the conclusion of is that if someone who's doing the work for the Attorney General's office and for us and for our community to end gun violence or to prevent it can become a victim of it, then no one, and I mean absolutely no one is off limits. Well, no one who looks like Justin is off limits. And while we're speaking of the great things that he was doing, I do want to also acknowledge that he just started an organization called uh, Love Our Youth, a community LLC nonprofit. So hopefully you all will be present to help support and people can support that initiative in the future so there won't be other individuals who, who fall victim to the same um, unfortunate um, plight that Justin did. Uh, the, the question was, has there been any comment from city officials or the attorney general's office? I know that the MPD chief of police um, did have a, uh, a press conference, which was um, soon after the, the video was released. I haven't heard any comment from the Department of Justice or attorney general's office yet. Oh, they heard from the attorney general office. They have not heard from Mayor Bowser, Chief Smith. No one have given condolences to the family to say, look, we understand this is under investigation. You know, the, the least you could do is give your condolences and let them know the case is being investigated. They have not heard from not one city official. No city official. And that is, that's disrespectful. 
and 10 shots. We're not talking about a regular shooting. We're talking about a cop that emptied 10 shots. The least they could do is reach out to the family and get their condolences and let them know they're investigating. Trayon White is the only person who reached out to the family, the only city official who reached out to the family. So let's talk about it because he understand. He understand that this city don't keep black marginalized communities safe. the U.S. Attorney General reached out. Which is a detective because the organization that he worked for. That's his employer. Oh, it's his employer because that's who he worked for. Yes, those are the only two people. Not even no, not even a council person, but Trayon White. The question was, what can members of the community in, in Southeast do to prevent things like this happening? That's a, a great question. That's exactly what we're trying to do here. We're trying to call for uh, an investigation into the, the officers so we can try to get the Department of Justice to do something about this pattern of practice of MPD. Um, person after person who was similarly situated to Justin Robinson in communities that are uh, policed differently than communities in Northwest um, have fallen victim to police violence, police brutality. Um, it's, it's a really great question of what these people who are in these communities can do, because a lot of times they're, they're at the mercy of police officers that should have been investigated, and that's what we're calling for, because I think um, we need to continue to just fight back, um, whether, you know, law firms and attorneys try to fight back legally, that's exactly what we're trying to do. So it's, a, it's been an ongoing fight that um, you can say has been going on for, for, for decades. Um, and the only thing we could do is one case at a time. Also, also for community members, right now Hearst Water Dreams have a petition that you all can sign for the demands of the family and actually to hold these police accountable at bit.ly slash Justin with the J for capital Justice, a capital J, the number four, Justin with a capital J. If you go to bit.ly bit slash Justice with a capital J for Justin with a capital J, you can ask the city officials and everybody to hold these cops accountable for the senseless murder and execution of Justin Robinson. In solidarity. Yes, absolutely. No, no, not yet. Um, I think I'd say one last question and then we're going to wrap it up if anybody has any last questions. Thank you all for coming out. I really, really appreciate y'all shedding the light on all the injustices that are happening in the District of Columbia, Maryland. And I just want to say to the Robinson family that Justin's death will not be in vain. I have all of the confidence and not only the United States, but the District of Columbia, that they will do what's right here. That they will convene a grand jury, that they will look into these police practices, say we could have some real change. Enough is enough. Justice for Justin. Justice for Justin. Thank you all. Thank you guys. Thank you guys. Unfortunately. Dante, you want to come with me?